Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name's Ketavon and last weekend I went to Amsterdam. I had an amazing time. It was the first time I'd been to the Netherlands. I enjoyed it much more than I thought I would. And I just, you know, relaxed, walked around, biked a lot. Um, ate delicious food and of course went book shopping. <laughs> um, I knew I was going to be book shopping. I had seen that there were tons of really great bookstores and I had selected a few that I really wanted to go to. Uh, but then I was really surprised at how many other bookstores were just, you know, I'd walk by them and peek in and they'd have really great English book selections. So I, I saw quite a few bookstores. <laughs> I only shopped from I think seven of them. Uh, but I, I really, really enjoyed my book shopping experience. bookstore I actually literally was a complete accident uh, it's called uh, the uh, Athenaeum bookstore book Kendall is how you say bookstore in, in Dutch and it's actually right next to a bookstore called the American bookstore which I was planning on going to and as I was walking I saw a bookstore that was like the, the facade was under construction so I just assumed that this was the American bookstore because it was like close by where like roughly on the map and so I just walked in I was like hmm, it's interesting there's quite a few Dutch books considering it's the American bookstore but since I like immediately found the English section and it had an amazing selection I didn't even think much of it <laughs> so I had picked out a few books and uh, was was had to cut myself off because I was like this is the first bookstore of the trip I've already found three books I need to just stop looking, but this bookstore in particular, I think, had a really, really wonderfully curated selection. I, I typically don't buy a lot in bookstores uh, because they t they really, I find, tend to have just the kinds of books that, like, everyone is reading and the ones I've heard a ton about already. Uh, if I want to go to a bookstore to, like, discover something new, um, it has to be books I haven't already heard of. And this bookstore had a ton of books that I hadn't heard of, uh, and of course the popular ones as well, but... It was, a, it was a really nice balance and I really appreciated that. So the first one I picked um, up was because, of course, I, as part of my Around the World Challenge, this is the first time I've been to the Netherlands, so I really wanted to focus on finding Dutch literature. Uh, and the first one I found was An Untouched House by uh, Willem Frederick uh, Hermans. And, and it's translated by Dutch, of course. 
by, let's see, uh, David Colmer. <clears throat> and this is very short, it's like less than 100 pages, and it's a Dutch classic about a uh, man uh, hiding from the Nazis, and um, he, he hides away in house, and then they find him there after he, I think, falls asleep, and then he pretends that he's the owner of the house, and they're not, he's not the man they're looking for, and it sort of ends up becoming like a bit, I think a bit of a psychological thriller, cat and mouse kind of thing, but it's, it's a Dutch classic and really short, and it was the first book I found, so I was like, yes, on to a good start, <laughs> and I'm very excited to read this one. So the next book I found was um, The Field by Robert C. Toller, uh, translated from the German by Charlotte Collins. So this one I actually almost didn't buy, and I'm really glad that I did because it's technically not uh, qualified for my Read Around the World Challenge. Um, Robert C. Toller is Austrian and uh, has lived in Germany for a really long time, writes in German. This book is set in Germany, um, but because he wasn't born in Germany, uh, it doesn't count. And I, I promised myself with this challenge that I wouldn't, you know, um, issue like non-challenge appropriate books books. Um, so I was like, no, I'm, I'm interested in this book. I'm going to take it because it doesn't fit anywhere, but I'm sure it'll be great. Um, I still do want to read, of course, translated in world literature that doesn't fit exactly into my challenge. So this story, um, it's somehow a novel. I'm not sure how he does it. I'm really looking forward to seeing how he does it. But each chapter is a point of view from different people that are buried in the town's cemetery in, in Germany, this town in Germany. And um, they're, they've all been dead for, I think, quite a while. And they all kind of tell their own little story. And that somehow gets woven into a larger story, which I'm really looking forward to seeing how that goes. So really looking forward to that one. And, and then this book, bookstore actually also had a really large, well, not really large, but relatively large Fitzcarraldo uh, section. So I picked up The Years by Annie Erno. Uh, this is my first Fitzcarraldo and my first um, Annie Erno, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, a lot of the synopses for, for Erno's stories I'm not super drawn into, but this one I was. And it's sort of like an auto-fiction written in the collective. Um, so she uses we and us instead of like her and me. Um, and it's uh, the story of um, from 1941 to 2006, sort of like the history of her life and France as well, which I'm really looking forward to because, of course, I hear a lot about French culture. I, I know a lot about French culture, but I feel like this will sort of be like a large sweeping overview that I that I would benefit from a lot. Uh, so that's the years. So those were the books I picked up at the first bookstore. And then we walked out and continued on our way and said, oh, this is the American bookstore, <laughs> or book center, sorry, that's what it's called, the American book center. And so we were like, okay, well, of course we have to go in now because we, we thought we were already in it. And um, and there I found this amazing little collection, um, Night's Night Train, a, a collection of short stories by A.L. Snyders, who um, is a part of this, like, I think it's not just Dutch, but uh, Dutch and maybe a few other countries, this, this literary movement around very, very short stories. He coined uh, this acronym, it's um, ZKVs, um, which stands for very short stories in Dutch. And uh, they're very, very short, like one paragraph sometimes. And um, I picked it up actually because of Lydia Davis. Lydia Davis is a short story writer herself in English. I read her, her short stories in college, gosh, like 15 years ago. And uh, she, I know she also translates French. She's very famous for that. And I know she translates a couple other languages, German and maybe one or two other languages. So I knew she was a translator, but I didn't think she spoke Germ uh, Dutch. And so I was really confused and I flipped through it and then lo and behold, no, she actually doesn't speak Dutch, yet she managed to translate these short stories. So I was very intrigued and it turns out, yes, um, you know, because German is similar to Dutch, she was able to sort of like piece together translations of these very short stories because she was intrigued and uh, of course had a Dutch reader like you know edit it and make sure it was like correct <laughs> but I was so intrigued by the fact that somebody who doesn't even speak the language could be such a good translator that they can do it even though they don't speak it so I started reading this book and I'm really really enjoying it um he, he's a fascinating person I'll, I'll probably talk way more in future videos about his writing process and things like that but excellent excellent I'm really glad I picked it up it's I think the most expensive book I bought and I'm not regretting it one bit
day we were by the park and there was a bookstore nearby and so we just decided to pop down and go into the bookstore and this was uh, Hoogstens, I think is how you pronounce it. And there I picked up Assembly by Natasha Brown. I've already read this one and it's in uh, my latest video. Um, I loved it. <laughs> so go to that one for more. And then uh, I also picked up The New Age of Empire, How Racism and Colonialism Still Rule the World by Kahinde Andrews. Uh, this one I hadn't heard anything about, but of course the title grabbed me and, and I, you know, flicked through on Goodreads and had great reviews. So it's, it's about 200 pages, sounds, seems like a pretty quick read. It is very dense. Um, but I, uh, of course, love this subject matter uh, and, and I'm really looking forward to, to reading this one. And then very close to that bookstore, there's actually a used bookstore called Stair de Z, I think is how you pronounce it. And um, I had been to a couple other used bookstores in Amsterdam at that point that I didn't end up finding anything at because they're very crowded and um, full of people and there's nowhere to sit down and I just, it's just such an unpleasant experience for me that I end up never finding anything. Uh, because I want to get out of there too quickly. Uh, and this bookstore had a very similar setup. It was very, um, like the shelves were crowded, floor to ceiling, you know. But when I went there, it was completely empty. So I was able to just sit there and like, you know, look through all the books. And I found quite a few. This was the least expensive bookstore that I went to. All of the books were between two and three euro, which was amazing. And, um, I, and I found a few. <laughs> so the first two I have are two dystopians. The first one is Super Sad True Love Story by uh, Gary Steingart. Uh, this one's I think a little bit older and, and maybe it's a little bit more well known. Um, it, it's, you know, I think it's just a pretty typical like, you know, post-apocalyptic, um, you know, the US has falling apart and he's still showing up to work because that's what you do during an apocalypse. Um, and so the, you know, this, I don't think I'll get to this anytime soon, but, um, I, I love dystopian. So I love to have, keep a few on my shelf for when I'm in the mood. So that's perfect for that. And then I had seen a ton of reviews on booktube for this one, Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. Uh, this is the story of a white family renting a house, I think in Long Island somewhere uh, for vacation. And then in the middle of the night, this black family uh, just shows up and says, oh, we're the owners and there's a power outage in New York City, so we need to stay here. And it's, it's this very tense, weird situation. Um, and so I have been intrigued by that, but not enough to, you know, like actually go out and buy it myself. But since it was like two euro, I was like, sure, why not? You know, another um, end of the world <laughs> kind of story. And then this next one I found, I, it caught my eye because it's a Penguin Modern Classic, but it's um, Who Among Us by Mario Benedetti. And I had just found another Mario Benedetti book. Um, he's Uruguayan. Um, and his, the book I found was Springtime in a Broken Mirror. So I found that um, earlier, I think a month ago. And, and then I saw this and I was like, well, you know, it's only one or two euro. So I will, if I love it, great. If I don't love it, not a huge investment. <laughs> um, and this one is about um, a love triangle. And uh, initially when I read the back in the store, I thought it was a different kind of love triangle. And then now rereading it, I'm realizing it seems like a pretty basic love triangle. And <laughs> those tend to not interest me as much. Um, but I'm hoping that there's something in here that's, that's very unique and different. So we'll see how that one goes. Uh, and another fun little love triangle, <laughs> uh, Henry and June by Anais Nin. Uh, she's, she's a very famous for her diaries. And uh, this book is basically a, a series of her diary entries from 19, I believe, 32. Um, yeah, when she met Henry Miller and his wife, June. And uh, she, I think she originally had a little bit of a crush on June. And then uh, June left and she ended up having an affair with Henry Miller and, uh, you know, messiness and drama ensue, of course. So um, I have an ebook um, of something by Anis Nin and I just don't pick up ebooks. So I thought having a hardcover would be, would be more incentivization to actually pick it up and, and read it. It's not the same book, but um, I, I have a feeling like I'm going to love her work once I get into it. <laughs> Um, and then I also found this, this one was actually, I had wanted to read. It's called math, uh, weapons of math destruction, how big data increases inequality and threatens democracy. So as someone who works with data, not big data, but I do work with data, uh, this just intrigues me. And 
Uh, it's something I'm vaguely aware of, of course, because, you know, big data is a corporation, um, a, a tool for corporations, not for, you know, justice <laughs> of any sort. So um, I'm very looking much, very much looking forward to reading this one. That one's by Kathy O'Neill. Yeah, O'Neill. And then this one was just like a little extra treat to myself. Um, <laughs> I love Desmond Tutu. So this is just like a little like mini coffee table type book of um, just some of his best quotes. There's like I think a 20 page introduction written by him. But then the rest of the book is basically just this like pictures and quotes. And it's like so um, like I just love his writing. And um, I've read one book by him. Um, that I love God is not a Christian. And um, and I really enjoyed it. And then I have, oh, it's right right there. No Future Without Forgiveness is like another book I picked up uh, and I'm looking forward to reading at some point. So um, this is just like a little bit like collection of his quotations. Um, I think he's an amazing person, an amazing uh, political leader. So uh, I just wanted to read through it and flip through it and I'll probably like unhaul it and, and give it to someone who would also be impacted by his work as well. The next bookstore was the New English Bookstore, and there I decided to purchase uh, the Penguin Book of Dutch Short Stories. I'd actually seen this a lot in um, in a, basically all the bookstores we were in um, because it was it was everywhere, and I was like hesitant to buy it. But at, at this point, I was thinking it's very it's actually been difficult for me to find a female author that I'm interested in reading. So I had, you know, looked through the Dutch section in every bookstore and just none of the female authors were really speaking to me or their, their work wasn't, wasn't speaking to me. So I thought to myself, I'll read the, the female authors in here and then maybe be inspired to pick up one of their novels if I like their short story. So that was sort of my initial thinking. Um, and then of course I flipped through it, um, we, we, after that bookstore, we were in a cafe and, um, out of, the I think 32 yeah I believe there's 32 nope 36 there's 36 short stories in this book it's like 500 pages it's very very dense seven of them are written by women so that was not um great news um to to notice after you bought it but I'm sure you know they're all great but um you know putting a woman's face on the cover I think is a bit of a you know tricky <laughs> move there. So I'll still read this probably not in one go. I'll probably read like, you know, one or two stories at a time, you know, on a, slowly. But um, I am glad I bought it still because it is a very wide variety of, of genres and um, styles. And I think it is um, sort of chronological in terms of like publication dates. So you do kind of get a little overview of the history of, of Dutch literature, um, which is of course dominated by men. Uh, and the next bookstore that day, uh, Friday, I decided to pick up At Night All Blood is Black. Um, this is very popular. It's uh, It won the Booker Prize, yeah. 
Um, I don't keep track of prizes if you can't tell, <laughs> but this is, um, you know, a French diaspora book, uh, a Senegalese um, author, I believe, David Diop, and it's translated by the by Anna Moscovakis uh, from the French, and this is the story of a Senegalese soldier fighting in World War II who loses his best friend, and, and it's about the trauma that he goes through, and um, you know, I, I wasn't like super excited about this book because I, I don't really need literature to tell me war is bad, but <laughs> but um, because it's uh, Senegalese and French uh, language, I thought why not pick it up? It, it, it does sound like a nice story and it's very short, so very quick read. Then on Sunday, I thought I was done book buying, but I wanted to go to one more bookstore uh, just because it was supposed to be beautiful. It's called uh, Sheltema, I believe is how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. And I thought it would just be like a quick little stop. It is a huge bookstore, um, but I thought I was all booked out and it's like five levels and one whole floor is dedicated to, to foreign literature, um, the majority of which is English literature. And it's super comfortable, super nice atmosphere. It has tons of couches and, and chairs that you can sit in. I really enjoyed it. And um, I finally found my Dutch female author. <laughs> so uh, Craving by Esther Gerritsen. Gerritsen. And it is translated from the Dutch by Michelle Hutchinson. And I was super, super thrilled to finally find uh, this book <laughs> because uh, I was really worried. I was like, wow, no, no Dutch women writers that I'm interested in reading, at least in the bookstores. So um, this one is about a mother who uh, has recently found out that she's likely going to die from cancer. And she r bumps into her daughter, who she sees very infrequently, and just kind of mentions it to her casually. And the daughter freaks out, as you do, and says, okay, I'm going to come live with you. And it's sort of like about that story and then kind of rekindling their relationship. And, um, and it's just, it's just, it sounds like the style of writing is, is totally up my alley. Very, like, um, sharp and direct. And the story itself is intriguing to me. So that one is my going to be my woman author. And then I was also... Um, really happy once I got up to the used book section. So they have a really, really large used book section. And it is, I think, like six full shelves of just English books. And it's on the very top floor. So I went up there, left my partner downstairs, <laughs> and said, oh, I'll just be right back. I'm going to go look at the used books. He texts me an hour later, like, uh, are you okay? It's been... <laughs> hour. I didn't even notice that much time had passed. What I had done is I just gone through, you know, the shelf. It was organized A to, to Z in terms of author last names. And I just kind of pulled any book that I was like, oh, I, I, yeah, that, that interests me, whatever. Sure, sure, sure. So I had a big stack. And then at the end, I realized like, oh my gosh, I found like over 16 books, I think. And I was like, there's no way I'm buying all these. So I had to sit down on the couch and like really read through them and like read the reviews and decide like which ones I actually wanted to purchase um, versus ones that just intrigue me in a bookstore. You know, you can't buy everything that intrigues you. Um, and so I had seen this book, The Discomfort of Evening uh, by Marika Lucas uh, Reinfeld. And uh, for a new book, the, the premise and the story just didn't intrigue me. It's about a, what seems to be a neurodivergent child, um, and there's a, an accident that, that messes up her family, and, you know, she has... Eh, it just, like, it, it, it seems like a weird book, but not the kind of weird book that, like, I'm like, oh, I need to read that that weirdness. I usually love weird things, but it didn't really draw me in. But then I found it in the used book section, 
Um, and I was like, okay, should I just give this book a chance? Like, so I looked it up on Goodreads and I actually saw that Eric Carl Anderson reviewed it. So I was like, okay, I want to, I want to read his review. And in his review, he mentioned that the author is trans. And I was like, oh, perfect. This fits my trans, you know, author read around the world, you know, attempt. Uh, not that I thought it would be difficult to find a Dutch trans author. I think that's like the one country where it's like, I think you're okay. But, um, but I was like, okay, maybe I'll give this a shot you know, because the author is trans and if I end up liking it, that would be great. Um, not that I have to like every book in my read around the world challenge, but it is nice. Um, so this also did win the international booker prize in 2020. So I'm sure it's good. I just, nothing about the synopsis, um, grabbed me. And, you know, sometimes those synopses, um, are very bad at grabbing people. So I'm not, um, convinced that it'll be an, un I'm not convinced that I won't like it. I'm just not sure. So that I was really excited about. And then The Elegance of the Hedgehog, I found two French books actually that I had already been wanting to read. This one was recommended to me by a French woman who goes to one of my book clubs when I asked her for some contemporary French literature recommendations. This one's very popular on booktube. I actually didn't realize it was on booktube for a long time because I got a real life recommendation. Um, but it's by Muriel Barberi and it's translated from the French by Alison Anderson. And this is just the story of a concierge in a Parisian apartment building and uh, a little girl um, I, and there and things happen. I'm sorry, I forget exactly what's about. Um, yeah, oh, she's suicidal. A little girl is suicidal. So um, yeah, it's about that. And I mean, it's, it's a French novel, so it's very philosophical. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, I'm wanting to read it, so I'm glad I, I have a nice copy now. And then the other French book I found, um, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly by Jean-Dominique uh, Bobby, and that is translated by Jeremy Legat. And uh, this one is actually a memoir, and uh, Jean-Dominique Bobby is, uh, or was, a French uh, magazine editor, very successful, and then he had a stroke one day, and he ended up with locked-in syndrome, which is like <laughs> the most terrifying thing ever. Um, basically everything is paralyzed with the exception of your eyelids. So all he could do was blink, but intellectually, uh, your mental capacities are totally fine. So that's what's terrifying about it because you, you're all there, but you can't do anything about it. So, um, he actually blinked out this memoir. It's, it's not super long, but wow, impressive. Like I can't even imagine writing, um, a book regularly, let alone by blinking it out letter by letter. So I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, so it's just his, it's just his memoirs. Um, I think of his life during this period, um, or maybe before as well, I'm not sure. But um, I've been really wanting to read this for a really long time. I didn't end up purchasing it because um, I found out he's a bit of a misogynist, but whatever, for, for uh, less than five euro, I can, I can support him. <laughs> so then I also found a Welsh novel by Kenan Jones, The Dig. Um, this I picked up on a whim. I, I am splitting up the UK. Um, I've only read England so far, um, but not Scotland, Northern Ireland or Wales. So I thought this would be perfect. Um, but I, I just was intrigued. It's, a, it's about a Welsh farmer who gets into a violent altercation with another man and, and drama ensues. And I don't know, it's just, it, it piqued my interest. So really looking forward to that one. And then couldn't help myself. I got Ending Up by Kingsley Amos, um, which is uh, a British story about five elderly people living together. I think like Golden Girls style. And it's set around Christmas time and they're all just like waiting for their grandchildren to come visit them. And apparently it's hilarious. So I thought this would be the perfect little light Christmas read um, for December. And then last but not least, I have found the complete short story collection of Kafka. So I actually read Metamorphosis very late in life. Um, I just a year and a half ago, I, I picked it up on a whim and was really surprised at how much I enjoyed it. So while I won't sit through and I think read this whole collection um, in one go, it is going to be great to have access to all his short stories um, whenever I feel like reading them. So I'm really, really happy about finding that one. So those are all of the uh, books I bought. <laughs> there were quite a few, I think uh, 20 of them in total. And so I, I they were more than I intended. Uh, I, I, I don't even know what I imagined buying. Certainly not 20, but 
it is what it is. I'm really excited about all of them. I think I'm going to enjoy all of them. So that's what matters. I hope you enjoyed some of my vlogging. It was my first time. So <laughs> forgive any like awfulness. Um, but I, I thought it'd be nice to show some scenes of Amsterdam and the bookstores that I was in. So I hope you enjoyed that as well. And um, please, if you've read any of these books, um, please let me know what you thought of them, um, especially if you liked them. And I think what I'm going to do is read first um, An Untouched House, The Field, uh, Craving. Um, yeah, those are like the three, aside, and also Night Train, which I'm currently reading. Those are the, the three that I'm going to like probably gravitate to first. Um, but if any of the others on that list are really great, please let me know and I'll bump them up and, and maybe read them a little bit sooner. Um, I do want to read all of them. I, that's the problem. It's like you want to read all the books all the time, right? <laughs> but you have to choose. So please help me choose if you've read any of them. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time. Bye.